So I already had to blow dry my hair and um, did my face stuff. I'm gonna cover my spots now because life and stress is causing me acne. So I'm just gonna cover it up. So I got to thinking, right? So what, I don't know, I'm like due for a rewatch of Game of Thrones. And I was, this is my like, train of thought I guess um I was like I know that the red wedding was actually like, inspired by a uh dinner that took place in Scotland so I started my research on that and I found where it came from well part of it Part of it came from what I'm going to talk about today, and part of it came from the Glencoe Massacre in the 17th century, so 1600. So we're going to talk about James II today. Oh, I think I got, no, I didn't get concealer on my, all over me. Uh, we're going to talk about James II today, and go through uh, his life like we usually do. If I could play Reigns of Castamere in the background of this video, I would totally do it if I didn't get a copyright strike, so that's why it's not playing. Because it would be if it were up to me. So we're gonna jump right into it. So James was born at Holyrood Abbey on October 16th of 1430. James was the second son of King James the First and Joan Beaufort. Before anyone jumps down my throat about this he wasn't the second son he was a twin he had an older brother named alexander who died before their first birthday and this left james as the heir apparent to the throne of scotland and with the title of duke of rothsey james was james the first was assassinated on february 21st of 1437 and this left the six-year-old little James, now King James II of Scotland. So I did an earlier episode about James the first, and I covered his death in that one. So if you want to like brush up on that, you can go watch that and I'll link it below. It'll be in the description. Um, so during, during the assassination of James the first, Queen Joan was injured but she survived and she managed to get little james out like out in out of harm's way james was crowned on march 25th in his birthplace of holyrood abbey until 1439 he lived with his mother and five of his six sisters at dunbar castle the oldest sister was margaret and she went to france in 1436 to marry the dauphin louis who became Louis the Eleventh of France? From the beginning of James James's reign, his first cousin Archibald Douglas was, who was the fifth Earl of Douglas, headed the government as a lieutenant general until his death in 1439, and he held the regency of the king. I think we've covered this before. Uh, regency or Lord Protector kind of two different things kind of the same they rule like for the child monarch so it, lord protector uh obviously so his cousin at this point was doing that for him after douglas's death the political power was shared between william crichton crichton first lord of crichton crichton Lord Chancellor of Scotland and Sir Alexander Livingston of Calendar. Sir Alexander Livingston. Livingston had possession of the young king as a warden in the stronghold at Stirling Castle. He also placed Queen Joan and her now husband John Stuart under house arrest at Stirling on August third of 1439 and was they were released on september 4th when an agreement was made to put james in livingston's custody so basically blackmail now things start to get dicey in 1440 invitation in the king's name was sent to william douglas the sixth earl of douglas who was now 16 years old and his younger brother david who was 12 they 
they were they were invited to Edinburgh Castle that November, and these two boys were from the Douglas clan, which were which was one of the most prominent family in the lowlands of Scotland. The clan or the clan was considered a threat to rival families and the crown because of their influence over the monarch. So when William and David arrived, they were entertained and 10 year old James took a liking to them. I'm keeping my makeup really simple today. You're gonna see why, but we're just gonna do a really, really simple. So while they ate dinner, while they ate dinner, a black bull's head was put on the table in front of the Earl. A black bull head was a symbol of death. They were both boys. So William and David were both beheaded in the castle, in the castle yard in Edinburgh on November 24th with little King James pleading for their lives. This would become known as the Black Dinner, and that is what partially the Red Wedding is based on. So if you'll get that, like that reference a little, if you've watched Game of Thrones, you'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about. A few days later, Malcolm Fleming of Cumbernauld would share the same fate as the two boys, the two Douglas boys. July of 1447, negotiations began to for James to marry Mary of Gilders when a Burgundian envoy came to Scotland. The negotiations were concluded in September of 1448. So I'm doing simple today, but I'm like torn between doing, I'm definitely doing a cut crease, but I'm doing like a, I don't know, black or dark brown. I'll go with dark brown. I feel safer with dark brown. Sometimes I'm in the mood to do this with black, but not today, man. Actually, I actually like this a little bit more. I'm going to use Dance in the Dark from MAC, which is a, um, where the hell is the brush I wanted? Um, Dance in the Dark. It's like, it's looks like black, but it's not. Uh, it is more like a dark purpley burgundy color. I think we'll use this one. The marriage took place on July 3rd of 1449 and was celebrated at Holyrood Abbey. So I'm just gonna like make my line and I'll go back in and like blend it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna come in here, make my line with this brush. Actually that looks really good. And I'm going to pull that out. Actually, that looks really good. We're good when you do that. I'm just going to go through again, go back in with the brush I used previous and just like blend this out a little bit just to, so we don't have like that harsh line. I want to keep that dark in the crease, but I just want to like alleviate that. So I'm going to do this. Just blend with the, I use sandstone by MAC. And then I'm gonna go again, kind of dot it. That way I can control where it is. And then, and drag. So I'm just dragging that where, my, that, like where my eyeball is and meets my socket. So I'm gonna take that color again and I'm just gonna drag it in. I'm actually going to probably drag this even more in. See how we're just pulling that color that's there inside. There we go. See how we did that. I'm going to do that again over here. I may have to add a little bit more. So I'm not going to dip this right into the color. I'm going to go ahead and take the brush I used that has the remnant color on it and just dot again. And then I'm gonna work on this, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Now I'm gonna just go in with that same dark color, Dance in the Dark on the lower lids very lightly, applying really light pressure right in the corner there. I don't wanna go heavy with this and you're gonna see why at the end, but. Um, anywho. Mary and James went on to have seven children. First, they had an unnamed son who was born on May 19th of 1450. He died the same day he was born. James, who would become James III, 
on July 10th of 1451. Mary was born on May 13th of 1453. Alexander, Duke of Albany, was born in 1454. David, Earl of Moray, in 1455 and John Earl of Mar in 1456. Lastly, Margaret was the baby and she was born in either 1453 or 1460. Remember at this time, uh, England is like within the Wars of the Roses. So um, this may have been a um, trying time for Scotland. I'm gonna jump off real quick and put this okay back so when james reached adulthood in 1449 he had to struggle to gain control over the country the douglases used this time to throw the livingstons out of the shared government james sought to revenge for the arrest of his mother and stepfather as well as the murder of the douglas cousins that livingston was in on the king struggled to throw the rule of douglas and creechton creechton and between 1451 and 1455 he had a hard time freeing himself from the power of the douglases so while william douglas the now eighth earl of douglas was absent from Scotland in 1451. There were attempts to curb his power. It needed, it ended up coming to a head in February or on February 22nd of 1451. And Douglas was murdered at Stirling Castle, supposedly. The king accused William Douglas of forging links with John MacDonald and Alexander Lindsay. This bond actually existed. It created not so good access access of power of independent independently minded men and would form a rival to the royal authority i'm just going to go in with my to do my foundation and i'm going to use the vive modern radiant creamy con the concealer and mixing it with skin do um if any I use medium four only because I do my uh, U tan and tone every week. So um, I find that that matches up best on my skin after I've used U tan. So where, where's my freaking brush? So when Douglas refused to break the bond with McDonald, James lost his shit stabbed Douglas 26 times and then threw his body out <laughs> out the window I Celtic temper am I right like if you have it you get it I'm not saying I don't have it because I do but so this didn't this murder didn't end the power of the Douglases but instead created a civil war between 1452 and 1455. James tried to seize power from the Douglas lands, but his opponents forced him into embarrassing climb downs where he ended up returning the lands to the ni now ninth Earl of Douglas, another James, and a short peace period started. I'm gonna turn this off because I look, oh, that, my eyes are getting old and I feel like I need the extra light, but it like makes me look so orange. This is so much better. I'm just gonna go through and some thought James was still in serious danger of being overthrown or being forced to flee the country. However, things started to shift for him. James James's patronage of lands, titles, and office to allies of the Douglases saw their allies change sides. After the Battle of Britchen, the Earl of Crawford sided with James, and in May of 1455, James made a decisive blow against the Douglases, and they were defeated, finally, at the Battle of Arkham. Arkenholm. Arkenholm? I'll put the spelling. So in the following months, Parliament declared the Douglas lands forfeited and gave the lands permanently to the crown. Oh my God. This included many other lands, finances, and castles. The Earl of, the current Earl of Douglas fled to England in exile and James finally got the freedom to rule. He 
so longed for. Between the forfeiture of the Albany Stewart during his father's reign and the destruction of the Black Douglases, royal power in Scotland took a huge step forward. James was an active and progressive king from 1455 to 1460. He had plans to retake Orkney, Shetland, and the Isle of Man, but did not succeed in that. He traveled the country, and it's been argued that he may have originated the practice of raising money by forgiving serious crimes. Also been argued that some of the unpopular policies of the kings originated in the late 1450s. It was in 1458 that an act of parliament made the king modify his behavior. He was also the first Scottish monarch that a, conte that a contemporary likeness survived. It's a woodcut showing his birthmark on his face. I tried to find it. I'm going to try again. So if you see it right now, I found it. So if not, I made a funny little movement there. This birthmark gave him the name, the nickname Fiery Face. James was popular with the commoners and socialized with them often in times of both peace and war. Even though he didn't enjoy literature like his father, the foundation of the University of Glasgow during his reign shows he encouraged further learning and there are also traces of his funding to St. Salvatore's, the new college of art. Bishop Kennedy at St. Andrew, but like his father, he had restless energy. James loved to promote artillery or promote the modern artillery and use it with some success against the Black Douglases. I'm going to build up this blush a little bit, I think. I just went in with a different brush with it today and I want it a little bit deeper. So this is a good, this, this one's really good at building. His, James' desire to increase Scotland's standing saw him besiege Roxburgh Castle, which was on the border of England in 1460. It was one of the last castles that was still being held by the English after the War of the Roses. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. I don't like too heavy a blush, but I just feel like today we need a little bit extra. To carry out the siege, James took a larger number of cannons. Now I'm just going in with, I don't know why I always forget, Modern Powder Perfector in medium, just to set my makeup. Even though I put Skin Dew in with the concealer for foundation today, you still, like, in, and I'm putting, like, I did that so my skin looks dewy. I'm now putting a powder over it. You still get the dew. You still get that glowiness that the Skin Dew gives. It just almost sets it. If you see, it didn't, like, it calmed it a little bit, but it didn't cover it, which is good. So to carry out this siege, James took a large number of cannons that had been imported from Flanders. On August 3rd, he was standing too close to the cannon when it exploded and killed him. On the account of Robert Lindsay of Piscotties, I'm going to say Piscotties. You guys, if I like, if I fuck up the uh, pronunciation call my ass out in the comments. I just want to make sure I'm right. I try. I really do. So if you know I'm wrong, just say, hey, this is how you pronounce that. So Robert Lindsay said, as the king, I'm going to quote, quote, as the king stood near a piece of artillery, his thigh bone was dug in two with a piece of misframed, with a piece of misframed gun that break in shooting by which he was stricken to the ground and died hastily. It's kind of like a sad and shocking way for him to end. The siege was carried on by George Douglas, fourth Earl of Angus. The castle fell a few days later, and once it was captured, Queen Mary ordered its destruction. James's nine-year-old son, oh, did you see that? James's nine-year-old son, James, was now King James III, and Mary acted as regent until she died three years later, possibly from a long illness. It's not quite sure how. My hair is wild today. So I'm going to jump off real quick and go do my brows and my lashes, and I'm going to curl my hair, and then I'm going to jump back on 
and we're gonna finish up with my usual we're back to fun facts today so we'll, i will finish up with that i'll be right back i'm back so i curled the bottom of my hair and i'm waiting for it to cool like the hair to cool so i can pull these curls out but while we wait i spend some time like time probably close to 20 years since i bought a i know sorry again don't come for me a drugstore <laughs> makeup uh but i did see that maybelline has this super stay vinyl ink so i wanted to try it so i did a that's why i did like a lesser eye look so we could use like i could use this like in your face lip color um so the directions on here say to shake for five seconds and then let it completely dry so i'm gonna just apply this and see how we do. Uh oh, what the smell? I probably shouldn't have done that. Hold on, real high. So you're supposed to let it dry. Let's see. I'm gonna let it dry. Oh, the color's really nice. Like, it's really shiny down there. I don't know if I need more. I think. <laughs> it's like, I like the color a lot. It's really pretty. I think it's dry. It's really pretty, though. Let me put that back. That was Moroccan Oil Mending Fusion Cream. It's like a dry oil, so I use it afterwards just pulled out my curls so today's fun fact is oh i have two today uh the first one is james was james the second was the first scottish monarch not crowned at scone abbey previous they had all been it's sticky this is sticky so just know it i love the color it's just sticky. Everybody before James had been crowned at uh, Scone Abbey, but he was the first nut. Second fun fact for this week is he is the, James is the great grandson of John of Gaunt and Catherine Swinford, who was John's, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna put a little bit of skin do in here, in the corner, just to, I feel like I need a little brightness in there. So Catherine Swinford was John of Gaunt's mistress for a long time. And after John's second wife died, he ended up marrying Catherine. There is, they had a ton of kids. John has a ton of kids. And I will probably do an episode on him one day just because I find everything so fascinating about him, about him and like his life and his offspring and uh the war of the roses started because of like his kids but um yeah so those are my fun facts for the day that is my episode today on james the second of scotland if you want to all all the products that i use today are listed down below and i'll link my uh of my james the first episode uh down below as well um trying to think i think that's it for this week we're doing uh an episode next week and then after that i'm gonna start something new also if you'll notice within the channel i did a like playlist so if you want to hear just it's not as sticky now i think it's dried but i like the shine i i like the shine to this oh what the color the color is unrivaled so I went with Mr. D yesterday to, we have CVS near us, um, to pick it out. And he actually picked this color out. So he did a good job. 
Uh, so next, I did the playlist. So if you want to just listen to the Scottish ones, you can just listen to the Scottish history ones. If you want to listen to the English ones, there's a playlist for that. Um, not next week. The week after, we're going to do, I'm going to do something new. And we're going to go into, in depth, into Tudor. I don't know about in depth, but it's going to be like a series. We'll call it a series. It'll be a series. Um, that will be fun. I'm excited to do that. I've been, that had been on my mind way back when I was going to start doing this. Um, that had been on my mind to do. So um, we're getting to there. Uh, that's it for this week. Everything's listed down below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to help me with my pronunciations or have an idea or just want to leave a comment because it really does help the algorithm please just leave a comment even if it's an exclamation point or a heart or something um if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe that helps me too i can be found over on instagram and now tiktok um I just turned 40 and I'm having a very hard time doing TikTok. So that's it for this week. Go follow, go follow me everywhere. And um, yeah, subscribe. I don't think there's anything more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.